that's in that's size, that doesn't count. I was gonna say, what defines a great lake? What makes a lake great? You have to see it from space. Mmm. I don't know if that's true. <laughs> You had me convinced there. Oh well, yeah, you had us all, AJ. You could have just left it. <laughs> well, I think you can see the Great Lakes from space, but I'm sure you can see other lakes as well. <laughs> from space, it must be bigger than my thumb. <laughs> yeah, that's right. How far away? After that, you are great. Yep. Are we expecting to encounter much wildlife on this dive? Have you, have you been to Clackwa before? <laughs> I don't think I have. It makes me think of Cascadia, and it's a little quiet from what I remember. But if it's anything like Barkley. Yeah, Folger and Barkley, there's a lot of activity there, mm. that's for sure. So relative to some of our other sites, I think it might be a little quieter. I mm. think, uh, yeah, there's probably somebody who's a biologist. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I don't I can't remember if I've actually been to this site before, so I don't have a good answer. I have vague have memories of, of nothing at the bottom. Oh, so. there you go. But uh, we'll we'll see. Survey says not much. Is um, French an official language of Canada? It sure is. Oh. Yeah. We oh, have two official languages, English and French. And uh, I don't speak French very well. Moi, je parle un peu. But uh, certainly in the province of Quebec, the, uh, the balance is the other way around. And a lot of the signage, I think, is outside of maybe Mont Montreal is Oh, you've been in Montreal. Of French. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, native French speakers in the maritime provinces as well. New Brunswick, mm. the Acadians. Up north in Ontario, too. There's quite yeah. a few. Yeah. That's right. I think generally the further west you go in Canada, the less French there is. But mm. there's exceptions to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I was, I was just thinking in my head, um, I wonder what does that look like in school, having English and French being official languages, like, are there certain schools that teach just in French, maybe just in English, or a bit of both? Yeah, I think, I mean, in all schools, French is mandatory until, I think for me it was grade eight, but uh, the, yeah, the Canadian school system has French immersion schools everywhere, so Ooh. you can definitely study just in French, I think. Did you do French immersion, Jeb? Yeah, I was in a French immersion elementary school and high school, so we didn't start taking classes in English until grade four. It was completely, mm. completely French, and then kind of the split. History was in French, geography was in English. Mm. That kind of balanced it off a little more 50-50 towards the end of high school. Okay, yeah. curious questions now. Um, which is your first language, French or English? Well, my family speaks English, and mm -hmm. yeah, that's the language I learned until I went to school. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then having um, gone to school with English and French, would you say, what are the pros and cons of that? Well, they're, they're complementary, definitely, to a certain extent. Having studied French, you know, it shares its roots with a number of other 
Romance languages like Italian and and uh, Spanish and others like that. So I, I definitely, when I see an English word, can kind of understand the meaning. In some cases, even when I haven't seen the definition. Um, yeah, there's. I think French has a more strict grammar structure than English does. Pros and cons. I don't, I don't know if I could specifically call out cons and pros, but I felt it was a nice to have experienced both. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Our data logger is quiet over there. Did you grow up in Canada with the French and English, or one or the other? Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't do French immersion, but I did attend uh, French classes in my English-speaking elementary and high school, so... I know very little French, not as much as Jeb does, uh, but enough to order a coffee. So usually that's all you need to get by. <laughs> I have a feeling this back row has all the levels of um, French we've got. I'm down for the 101, maybe. Then there's a 102, and then after that would be 202, right? Oh no, 201. Well, I'll say to fit in all the engineering knowledge I gained since then, I had to lose some French. Mm. So. <laughs> I definitely understand it. Speaking, it's much more difficult. Mm. You got any French speakers in the front front row? I mean, I took French in college. There's none left in there, though. <laughs> mm. Also, I'm going to make some quick changes to the camera, ROV. Roger. I took French immersion in grade one, so <laughs> no, not a lot of French up here. Yeah. Mm, I feel like, uh, is it dawn? Are we hitting dawn right now? I feel like I see some light off the horizon of some of our back cams, aft cams. Son, is that you? And Mal and I, my colleague, or my friend, I guess you could say, who's in um, language technology, like mm. making uh, software to help teach people different languages and grammar. He uh, got to visit Hawaii, and he said there's a major language revitalization program. Yes. In the schools. Yes. I'd like to say I'm a proud product of the immersion school system. I grew up in Aotearoa, went to a Maori speaking school until I turned about just before my 16th birthday. From that immersion school, I got thrown into the Hawaiian language immersion school system. Um, I couldn't speak fluent Hawaiian at the time, but you know, everyone looked at me, thought, oh, sh she looks Hawaiian, sounds a bit Hawaiian. Well, I didn't actually sound Hawaiian at the time, but they would ask me Hawaiian questions, and like I couldn't answer those Hawaiian questions, so. When I went to um, university, I sought out to make sure that I could answer all these questions. So I um, have a bachelor's in Olalo Hawai'i, or Hawaiian language, now, and I can happily hold a conversation with you in Hawaiian, if you please. And um, I know some questions to some Hawaiian kind things, as we might say. So um, my per I was wondering how the, the pros and cons, right, of this... Uh, immersion school system, how that, what, what are your thoughts on the English versus um, English and French? And then I like how you put it is that they're complementary to each other, the two languages. For myself, um, <clears throat> many, there's lots of pros and cons to having, um, being brought up in Maori and then learning English and, and also with the Hawaiian and the English and, um, yeah. It's nice to, to know. I love languages. I know very little French, but maybe I'm thinking, oh, maybe every time we get on watch, I can learn a new French word or practice a French sentence. Since my family will be visiting Burgundy in the coming year. And um, although I will be relying heavily on my mother to know the French, it'd be good to probably pick up on my end so I'm not needing her at every at every store that we go to <laughs> so as someone who can speak both english and hawaiian 
do you find that there are certain words in the Hawaiian language that have no direct translation in English and maybe vice versa? Definitely. There are very little words that um, are, like, if you look at it, you wouldn't think that it's anywhere <laughs> um, near English. But um, if you're a Hawaiian speaker, oh, is that a fish? What kind of fish that? Little fish. I, like, don't want to miss anything on the blue screens anymore since I missed the jellyfish. So I'm, like, watching. <laughs> The fish didn't want to be seen. It's gone. Oh, what is that? Something. Siphonophore, I think. Siphonophore. Is that from the dinosaur age? Probably. <laughs> I mean, not that one. <laughs> In Hawaii, when we go on hikes and we see leaves as big as the screens, it's like it came from the land before time. <laughs> <clears throat> um, but in in Hawaiian, um, the Bible was translated into Hawaiian language. So um, depending how you grew up or um, your Hawaiian language, you can kind of tell or see who had um, where their lineage of language comes from. If it if they're like heavy on the Bible and you'll hear a lot of words that refer to the Bible in the way they speak. And then there's also a Bible. What language was the Bible first written in? I guess that will depend on the Bible that we're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure originally. <laughs> of course, the one that gets kind of the claim to be the first comprehensive and widely distributed one would be the King James Version. So I suspect English is kind of maybe the modern foundational text for subsequent uh, versions. Thanks. I, yeah, I know. I think there's been a couple of um, translations of the, of the Bible. If you each could pe pick why... If you each could pick a new language to learn, which language would you pick? This question's not for me, by the way. Although I do like the question. Hmm. I'd pick German. It's, uh, it would meet my personality. It sounds pretty angry and unhappy. Just kidding, the German people are very nice. They just sound angry. I'm part German, so I can sound angry sometimes yes. too. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also like to welcome Dr. Martin Hiesman, who's listening from shore right now, watching his instruments get deployed. <laughs> hey, Martin. I should note that he, Martin Hiesman is a German name. <laughs> I wonder if, um, is it Dr. Martin? Yeah, Martin is his first name, Dr. Martin Hiesman. My um, lineage that takes me to Germany, um, the name directly would be Crowningberg which I believe is connected to a princess or a castle somewhere. Maybe any, maybe any connection to you, Dr. Martin? Maybe you could educate me of Tad? Anyhow, on to the next.
There's a comment that I'd agree with. German is a hard language to learn. I flunked out in high school. I think any language, any language is hard to learn. The hardest one for me to learn is music. I love it, but it's also hard. Give me a paper with all those lines and symbols on it. Yeah, I don't know. What was that, like, universal language? Ooh. Es was it Esperanto or something? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know it? <laughs> no, I Can don't you speak know. It? it was a constructed language of some sort. Esperanto. Artificial language, 1887. I think there's still, like, conventions where people go and speak it to one another. There's some... Hmm. Baba, black sheep. Looks like a... Looks very difficult. Yeah. And the thing about music, too, I have a few friends who are musicians and can sight read, mm. you know, scores and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I try to read and it's so painful for me to work through note by note. And, and they say, well, keep in mind, Jeb, we, we read this every day. Mm. And I'm expecting some sort of pr immediate proficiency. And it's, these are folks who just do it every day, mm -hmm. hours every day. And it's, it's another language, like you say. Mm -hmm. I think it also depends on what instrument you're practicing on. Um, some mm -hmm. instruments are, I don't know, they, they tend to be a little more, uh, more easy to get through. Um, especially if they're heavy in the melody versus like if you have to focus on two hands or something like that. Uh, I used to do a little band in high school, so uh, saxophone seemed really easy to pick up with musical score reading. I always wanted to learn the saxophone. Well, I don't know if I still know it, but... <laughs> Did you bring your saxophone <laughs> on the ship? <laughs> Not with me. Maybe <laughs> someone can uh, lend me theirs. Missed opportunity. Do you think uh, accordion would be a good two-handed one to learn on? <laughs> I heard a joke about, I mean, there's a thousand of them, but about an accordion player who uh, pulled off the road to go to a restaurant, and he realized halfway through his meal that he had left his car unlocked and his accordion was in there. And he ran out quickly but he was too late. Somebody had already put another accordion in his car. <laughs> I guess the joke is it's a crime to give somebody an accordion. Does anyone on board have Scottish ancestors? Probably, but uh, yeah. Not 100% sure on that. I have current relatives that live in Scotland. I don't know how to pronounce this. AJ, any help there? This word. I here. cannot help you with that word. <laughs> what does Google say it says? Mm, let's see. Let's Has there been any deep sea exploration of the, I'm gonna try this word, I'm sorry, um, Puisegur Trench to the south of New Zealand. Hey, ROV pilots, you ever explore the, the south of New Zealand? That's one for you there, Dave. Mm, no, not really, I think the closest we got for that was on an expedition with Odyssey, um, 2011, 2012, we did Kermadec. 
that's about as close as we got after all the, the black smokers, SMS deposits, things like that. I know uh, Natural Resources Canada was building pressure sensors for uh, an expedition at the Hikarangi Trench, which is to the north of New Zealand. Thank you. Lynette, what language would you choose to speak or learn? That's the question that's come. Oh, I don't know. I have like five different languages in my Duolingo that I keep switching back and forth between. <laughs> What are those languages? Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> um, Norwegian is definitely the one that I've done the most. Um, Dutch. I started the Hawaiian one. Russian. Spanish. Quite the array. Yeah. Quite the spread. <laughs> I think I could probably get by in Norway, but none of those other places if I had to speak the language. How do, how do you say hi in Nor Nor Norwegian? Hi. Oh, beautiful. I got yep. that one. I got that one, guys. <laughs> so I can say hi. <laughs> yeah. I think it's, um, they say Norwegian is one of the easiest languages to learn for native English speakers. A lot of similarities. Perfect. Video, Jacob. Jake. What you what got? Languages? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Uh, the utilitarian answer is Spanish. Just because it's a very helpful language to know. But uh, probably Irish Gaelic, just because I have a lot of family ties. Mm. It'd be cool to, to understand it. Mm-hmm. What else we got in the front row that I didn't share yet? We got German from Josh. Rock and roll. Mm. I know that's my favorite language. Is there an era of rock and roll, like, specific, or is that, like, only specific? Is rock and roll only specific to, like, a set amount of years? No, I don't think there's a specific era for it. It's all music. It just constantly evolves, right? Mm -hmm. Like any form of music. But it still is, and probably always will be, an international language. But yep. each track and each song affects people in different ways. You could have everybody in this room listen to the same piece of music, but it'll affect you in a different way, right? I agree. Is it true that the sea level is rising worldwide? I guess it kind of makes sense with all the ice melting. I read something a, a few days ago, it might have been on the way out here actually. Um, 
a part and a part of the the paper was a a graphic that showed global sea level rises. And it's I think if I remember right, it's like two and a half inches in the last fifty years as an average globally. It's quite significant, really. That's a lot of water. Well, we've had. Do we have any bottom pressure recorders that have been running for tens of years? I mean, Venus has been around for 15 years, so. Yeah, that's a good point. Look at the long-term trends since we started recording that. It's definitely something we could be capturing on our network. Sometimes when there's a process that takes place so gradually like that, though, it's indistinguishable from the instrument just slowly settling into the seafloor, tiny, tiny bit at a time. There must be some pretty clever scientists who know how to separate those two signals. Yeah, and I might add, um, one of the islands in the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, um, an island where sea turtles go to nest and have their their children, um, that island is going to be soon gone and will no longer, the sea turtles will no longer be able to go there to give birth to their eggs for the next generation of sea turtles. And there's a lot of conversations about, um, are we humans gonna do anything about that? Are we gonna do some kind human thing and add more sand to make more island for the turtles to continue? Or are we gonna let um, nature do its thing Nature will do its thing, and um, as we've done, as they have done for years, they will adapt and find a new environment. Or will they die and never come back? Who knows? Um, I think a lot of people have many different opinions on what should or shouldn't happen with that. And um, I feel um, that's a good example of sea level rising beaches no longer existing because just the ocean comes over and never goes back down. Thank God for king tides that brings the ocean level a wee bit down for a couple of hours and then back up. This question. Some one of my friends here could a ask answer this. What is today's mission here? What is our mission here today? I think Jeb should answer that one. I think the principal investigator should answer, but I'll do my are best. Are we at 1,800 <laughs> meters? He wanted to be woken up. We are. Maybe we can get him on shore. Somebody will give uh, Martin a phone call. I guess he has to maybe be in the, the dive room. Today we're... Get in your car, Martin. <laughs> we're deploying a, uh, an instrument package that uh, contains a battery, a data logger, and a pressure recorder. And we're going to place it on the seafloor and connect it to an acceleration meter, which is already in place. And Martin has two other sites just like this on either side, separated by some number of kilometers, um, one close to, uh, closer inshore and one further offshore. And from those three, he's interested in measuring the deformation of the seafloor due to the motion of the plates that AJ mentioned earlier. We've got the Juan de Fuca plate that is uh, moving eastward and subducting under uh, the continent. And hopefully with measurements from these three sites, he can see how the seafloor is changing its position a little bit, maybe coming up a bit higher. And I think what they do is they track that motion over time and you can see small releases and tension as the plate slips a little bit more. And I think the intention is to uh, track that over time and then eventually there'll be a great release of pressure when that plate finally slips under the continent 
and we'll have the mega earthquake. There might be a few more subtleties to his study, but that's kind of what I picked up. And what's the name of that project? It's the NCSZODFL with the APT and the VPR. That's right. It's the uh, Northern Cascadia Subduction Zone Observatory, which is a broader project. And then specifically, we're at one of the deformation front laboratory sites with our BPR, bottom pressure recorder, and our APT, acceleration pressure temperature instruments. Yeah. And they're incidentally, they're made by a company called RBR. So you can pretty much talk for a minute without ever saying a full word, just using acronyms. <laughs> New language to be learned right there. Jargon. <laughs> Jargon, yeah. Thank you. What is everyone's favorite terrestrial wildlife? It's a tough one. We've got grizzly bears on the island now. So maybe, maybe grizzly bears. I don't know about favorite. Yeah, Josh, what's your spirit one. animal? Oh, I was just thinking the mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fitting.
question for the ROVs. Hello. What is the total weight of cable out at depth for the ROVs? Which the depth they're going to now or at 4,000 meters, the deepest depth? Uh, I'll give you both answers. Hold on. <laughs> Uh, the expert of this ROV on board says heavy, and then he shrugged his shoulders and said, I don't know. Um, oh, probably 12,000 pounds. Uh, we're at 7,000 right now at a depth of 2,000 meters. The vehicle does 4,000, so. Yeah, somewhere around 12, 13,000 pounds of uh, cable if we're out at 4,000 meters depth. So Trevor was correct, heavy is the answer. Do you guys have a load reading on your main winch? Sure do, and it includes the 3,300 pound uh, weight that's on the vehicle. Atlanta, uh, and it is right now at about 8,000 pounds oh. total. So almost 5,000 pounds of cable. Yeah. Weather permitting, um, what day do we expect to dive on the Endeavour hydrothermal vents? Well, scheduling a cruise is pretty difficult because there's a lot of moving pieces. But if 
everything goes really well, then we may be getting there on June 29th or June 30th. But that's a big maybe. Roger. Thank you. In the near future, we'll be there. At some point, we will be there. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned, yeah. It's definitely the highlight. It makes you, uh, as um, my Kumu would say, it's the Portuguese method, the Portuguese upcoming scene. You don't know what's going to happen, so you just got to keep coming back. <laughs> What's the other ship visible in the quad cam? Um, I don't even know what's in the quad. I don't, what, what, do, what are the cameras that we have up on the quad channel right now? Uh, right <coughs> now in the quad, it should be the cam port off the back deck. Mm. Looks like a shipping container, but it's very small from here. A wee little thing. Smaller than my thumb right now. Not a great leak. Are you in space? <laughs> From the surface of the ocean looking down, I am. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, it's another ship. I could walk out the door and get a better look, maybe. Looks like some kind of barge or shipping vessel. <laughs> Could be anywhere.
Hey, AJ. Hey, Josh. What's the, uh, what are we doing? Wouldn't you like to know? Fine, don't tell me. Weren't you listening to Jeb's wonderful explanation? Jeb uses really big words. I need you to explain it. You don't use the big words. Okay. Um, so we're going to get down there. We're going to see a cable running between one platform that's got batteries and loggers on it and the other platform that's got the sensor on it. So we're going to map we're going to map out sort of the cable from one to the other. We're then going to go and unplug the instrument from the logging platform and we'll use the parking position that's in the bio box to dummy off that connector. We're going to clear the connector, so we'll probably drag it back towards the instrument. Um, then we'll sort of determine a landing zone for the swap. And then we're, what we're going to be swapping is we're going to be swapping the platform that's got the logger uh, and the battery pack on it. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll see if we can land the new one next to the old one to make the transfer kind of easier. And then we'll do our winch wire operation to send down the new platform. Uh, we'll use the pink hooks. So the ROV will unhook the new platform, hook into the old platform, send it back up to the surface, um, and then we'll plug in the new platform. That's the dive in a nutshell. The big disclaimer to all this is do not touch the instrument. The instrument is buried in the seabed and we like it how it is. Don't touch so it. So let's be really, really careful when navigating around it not to accidentally uh, sit down on it or anything. And when we're clearing the cable, we just have to be mindful not to sort of pull, pull on that end of the cable. So we'll, we'll make sure we leave it nice and loose and just make sure that we give ourselves enough room for a landing zone that makes us comfortable. And when it comes time for the two wire operations, I think we'll sort of have to sort of team huddle and figure out how we want to get that clump weight away. I think we decided on a seven meter distance between the pink hook and the clump. And I imagine we want to lay that towards the starboard side of the vessel. So we've got two on the nav screen here. So we've got the APT. You sure can. You're still muted though, but this one's up here. Mute. There you go. All right. So we've got one waypoint that is the APT. That stands for something, something tilt meter. Roger. Something, something. Acceleration, pressure, temperature. APT. I was, I was way off. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed so it. close. Didn't we call? Isn't this platform called a tilt meter platform? We call. It, there's about three different names for it. Oh my god. Tilt meter's fine. Is there a tilt meter on it? I guess the accelerometer there's, acts as a tilt. There is no platform. The thing you're referring to is just this instrument stuck into the seafloor. Yes. Yep. But does it measure tilt? It does measure tilt. There we go. It is a tilt meter. It is a tilt meter. I'm not Perfect. crazy. Oh, okay. now I know so that's the instrument itself, <laughs> yeah. uh, which is north. And then this is the platform that we're swapping. So uh, Roger, yeah. I've got pictures here. So platform reducer. Lights. Uh, so you got this guy here. Check this, this out. Oh, yeah, that's sweet. That's pointing right in my eye hole. Here you go. Yeah, do it. Perfect. So this, this was like the previous deployment. Yeah. This. That's uh, the tilt meter. Yeah, that's like that little. That, I don't know, dagger looking thing is now in the seabed and that's what we want to leave. Yeah. And then you can see it's got all this, I think it's a, it's 50 meters of foul mat. And we're swapping this boy out here, eh? Yeah, we're swapping this boy out. So, Kay. so it'll be, I don't know how many meters away, maybe nav can, sh can, can measure the distance between those two waypoints, but there's 50 meters of cable, um, there for us to play with. Roger. So first step is unplug. Boop. Unplug yep. both sides of this guy. No, uh, just the one. So you just unplug. Oh, is it autonomous? It's autonomous. It's autonomous. That's Roger, right. So you yeah, just understood. unplug its connection. Like right, yeah. that's just plugged into that. Get that out of so the this way. This is hardwired. So yeah, just get that out of the way. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. I don't know if we have like a preferred side to land it on, given the orientation of the ship. If we want to land the new one, like there on the yeah. Uh, we probably want it like, <coughs> yeah. What is that we, distance? Uh, I'm not sure. Nav, can you measure the distance between the two waypoints we have there? Yeah, it's 40 meters. And cable's five zero. Yeah. Okay. We don't want to be farther. 
We don't want to be farther. Farther's pad. What if we land it right here? Boink. Yeah. So we just kind of go n northwest of its current location. Yeah. Well, we'll survey it. See, it's all muddy there, right? Yeah, and I mean, we can maybe cool. um, clear the cable to the east, and that would give us like a nice landing zone. Clear the cable to the east. Yeah, absolutely. Seems fine. Are you going to read us some questions, Trevor? You're in the hot seat. No. You can make them up. Uh, no. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah, I don't know. I think that's Clear as mud? Yeah, if we, if we want the fit wire to generally generate that, ideally without the fit Yeah, I mean, I, th I think that's kind of an ideal situation. If we felt like that was unachievable, then we could move the clump. We could either drag the clump or we could lift the clump right up so that the hook's suspended again and then ship move. But of course, then you get kind of like swinging cable, which is less ideal than just having it in one spot. 100 meters to go. There will be a beacon on the wire, yeah. There's no beacon on the platform. Trevor, well, Trevor's talking there, yeah. Is it not just gonna be right under the wire? I, it just feels redundant. But if, if you really want it, we can make it happen. It's just another pull, like we'd have to pull pin it. Yeah, we're going to survey, yeah. Yeah, I mean, could you even do that from a distance and just use the sonar? Is Getting it? altitude, 71 meters. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that makes sense. Yeah, so we aim for between f what five and ten meters northwest, and then we lay the clump no northeast of that as as close as we can. Yeah, but yeah, that would be sweet. Nautilus's minimum ship move is five, so. <laughs> Yeah, I see. Okay, well. Yeah, right, yeah. Well, we'll try, and if we if we have to sort of just shift the clump a little, that's what we'll do. Yeah, yeah makes sense. That's 40 meters. Roger. Twenty meters off bottom. I'm gonna bring the winch hole stop there for now. Roger. We'll see what happens.
Okay, <laughs> I'm off stick lock, so you're gonna have to hold a heading at some point there, Dave, I guess. All right, come on. That looks like bottom. That's the bottom of the ocean. Welcome. Welcome. Are you welcoming us? <laughs> <laughs> okay, where are we going? All right, well, uh, I think we're looking the wrong way. So I think we want to change our heading to, I don't know, 350. Nav, can you point us towards the southern platform? You want a ship move there? No, no, just for the ROV, just a heading or a bearing, oh, I should say. Oh, okay. Uh, just so you know, I saw this note. We're going there. Yeah. 338. Yep, 338. 338, roger. Mm. Yeah, I'll, let's... All right, I'm going to switch over uh, to your DVL. Roger. Okay, should be good. Whoa. That's crazy. Is there a target behind us in sonar? I don't know. Looks like one. I gotta back up a little bit so I can turn around. No, not more. Uh, I want whatever you want, Dave. Oh no, well then, now, we're, now we have a conundrum. Dave and I need to figure out what we want. So... Looking in sonar. I don't see that target anymore. I have turned around and I'm going towards something on nav. Not on sonar. Yeah, Maybe let's I'm a go with that. High up, probably. Oh, that might be a target there on your. There's something.
What's the range on that, Trevor? Okay. A thousand? Thanks. Shh. Every nut and bolt, please. All right, where is this thing? Dead ahead. Trevor, where's the thing? I don't see the target anymore. I'm looking right at it, but I'm not. Come down a little, but it, I would think I would see it. Oh, coming down. You can play with whatever you want. Fishy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or not. According to Nav, I'm pretty close. It's right there. <laughs> you think that's it? It's a fish. Could be a rat tail. Those kind of translucent things on the bottom are sea pigs. Is the sonar on the left, is that Atalanta or are they both Herc? No, the left the is Atalanta. Okay. Uh, any instruction? <coughs> um, oh, we're on 30 nope. meter ridge. Keep going. Hang on a Keep going north? Yeah, I think so. Okay. If we can even find a cable, that'll help us. So Roger. I think this is the right area to search. Okay. I don't know how low we might want to get to hit the target in sonar. They're both pretty short platforms. They're not okay. IPs. Roger. Pretty squat. Roger. What's that? Is that a thing? That looks like a cable. Uh, there's a cable. Uh -huh. Okay, let's go to that. So I think we'll check out the south end first. Turn left on it. Turn in left. Oh. ROV, is now a good time to go ahead and white balance, or? Sure. All right. Oh, nope. <laughs> Stand by. Roger. Uh, is that you or Dave? Yeah. Uh, Roger. Trevor, there's... Where? Where? Yeah, there's one. Okay, so go to your auto XY page.
cable path looks pretty straight, eh? All right, video, go for it, white balance. And they don't get the nut, and sometimes you gotta do <coughs> Sure. So right now you might need to sit down or arm up. What, first of all, what other cameras do I have to look in right now? going to work for your video? I think we're going to need a little more. It should be about 80% of the frame. You want us to come out so you can see the arm? Uh, oh, we can't zoom in anymore there? Uh, rack out. Yeah, that's as far as it goes. Can you rack out? Uh, stand by. No, you're not. Okay, cool. camera's coming out, or do we want to zoom out, zoom back out for that? Yeah, I can pull out for you. Thank you. Not thinking. Brain's off. Camera's coming out. Tilting down. Gotcha. Okay, video, you want to try that? Roger. All right, we're going to go ahead and black balance. This is going to make the camera black for about 10 or 15 seconds. This is intentional, and it's starting now. Alright, wet balance complete. Zoom in for you. Roger, thank you.
Next time, Dave, we're going to want you to be grabbing the connector while we're white balancing. Trevor. Oh, Trevor's gone. AJ? Yep. What do we do? All right, well, let's go to have a look at this platform. So we just want to have a visual inspection of the frame, and then we'll confirm the position and heading. Turn the hydraulics to that off, please, Dave. Yeah. There you go. You can poke away. Nav, is it possible to like reset the right. uh, waypoints so that they align with the location of the platform? Um, <laughs> yes, it's possible, um, in high pack for sure, on the nav screen, uh, I'm not sure how to do that on the fly, but we could give it a try. Well, I can maybe switch over to high pack. Okay. Do you want to come up? Do you want a, do you want a new target here, um, and label it 2023-06? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Once we're once we're sort of there, we'll get a a better position for you. Okay. Just a flow thing. Yeah, you got the double flow. That's just just turns. Gonna pick you up a little bit, Josh. Uh, stand by. Are you sure? Okay. Well, uh, I'm, I'm having trouble just keeping this thing in view. I'm gonna steal some glow for a moment. Okay. And I'm gonna reset them all to zero. Okay. Just in case they didn't. Sure. Somehow, I don't know. Be gentle. Uh, AJ? Yep. Sorry. Uh, we're just, what would you like? You want to keep going? Oh, that's the other way. Just want to keep looking around this thing? Yeah, if you could just get in nice and close to it. Roger, stand by. Could it be because he's needing so much down? Right. I'm full down right now. Yeah. <coughs> okay. I do not believe there are any weights around. No, the site's pretty. I don't even have a site map for this. This That's is like just an autonomous barren. platform. Yeah. yeah. Closer. Yes, please.
Okay. Yeah. Looking good. Yeah. Looking great. If you, we could take a new coordinate here and a heading. If you get yourself aligned with um, the connector side. This side here. Yep. What's the heading there? Where's my heading number? There it is. 50. You can mark this as um, old if you could put old in the name because we're going to drop a new one nearby and so we'll have two targets. Like 62. Do you want me to write old now? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. 63 degrees on that face there. Okay, so let's just survey this cable. Roger. I am going to move whatever direction this is, north along this cable. And did you want me to put a bearing in my notes as well? Okay. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. What bearing did you have? Do I have something going on here? Sorry, say again? 6-3. Um, I have a depth of hurt. Two five zero one. You yep. Yeah, you can take it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Roger. Sean, just note that her <laughs> saltimeter is showing three meters, so seabed will be three meters beyond that. Where are we going? 40 meters. Probably drag Argus over there. Uh, Atlanta, I should say. Oh, no. The end of the line. No. <laughs> Let's just keep heading along this bearing. Okay. Is this instrument gonna even show up on sonar i mean it's okay if it's buried it's doing its job we don't have to touch it right but i'm just curious if uh if we'll find like if it'll pop back out or if that's it well, this might be just where it is i think it was supposed to be 40 meters away but we have a position for it sort of yeah, if we take like our relative position between the old mark and then we sort of use that to project the APT, I think that probably gets us around where we are. Roger. No, I think. Oh, I think it's buried. Have we gone 40 meters away yet? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. we have. Isn't that what we're looking for up here? Is that not, that's not a thing? Um, so that is the target, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but this was also our target, uh -huh. and the actual thing was down here. Uh, um, so if we Roger. do the same sort of thing. Yeah, I'll just have a look around, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and then we just head back to the platform, maybe take a new path, see if anything pops out of the ground. Sure. I guess it was a good job burying it. 
Yeah, that's how we want it, buried. Can't see. So I think what we're seeing is that there's not a lot of spare slack in that cable, especially with it being buried halfway. So the landing zone for the new um, platform will want to make sure that it's closer to the closer to the APT than the old one was, if that makes sense. So we might not like we want to make be very careful that we don't just come straight west here. We, we want to come northwest for the landing zone. Do you want me to head back to the uh, yes, sir. thingy? Roger. Yeah, this is where this is where like um, the target was, and then this is where we found it. So it's old because yeah, it's this is its last moment on this seabed. Yeah, well, these are all 2021 marks. So Josh, once you get to that new, or sorry, that old platform, mm -hmm. we'll uh, land ourselves by the connector panel and uh, we'll put our parking position in the Fletcher. So, Roger. Nav, can um, can you just make a note here of where the cable's buried? Yeah, you want to target in high pack for that? Yes, please. Okay. And maybe just a distance from the last target as well. You want a distance from here to where we found the platform? Yes, please. Okay. About three, seven meters. Okay.
You want to sit at the connector panel, AJ? Yes, and sir. We're going to disconnect it. Okay. We're going to disconnect it. We're going to clear it to the east. That's cool, Jelly. Look at the jelly. Touchdown. All right. Uh, we can look, have a look inside our bio box and see if we can pull out that parking position. We might need to wait for some viz. Is the front one called a bio box? Hello. How are you? Good. First step, parking position in Fletcher? Correct. Okay. Did you leave yourself enough room there to get that plate in? <laughs> no, is the answer. <laughs> Instead of just scoffs. But, uh, well, well, we'll find out. Sounds like a problem for future. Do you, call, do you call the front one the bio box? Or is it like the porch box? Toolbox. The toolbox? What tools you got? Parking position. Nice. Tools you got? I got nothing. Okay. Mm, can I please get bubble cam on preset one? Just want to make sure I'm not going to wipe anything off the porch. 
That is a wacko jelly. Can't see nothing. That's fine. What could go wrong? No, it's all good. I got it. It's a sea pig. That is a wacko sea pig. Anything? I think I'm clear. Folks ever watch Trailer Park Boys? You know the clearing stick? With the uh, independent toolbox and porch. If you open the toolbox while well, there's stuff on the porch, it's like a built-in clearing stick. Uh, pin that way. Hmm. So that's Puck's first operation. You like it pinned towards you? I don't think so. Cause I'm not, this is yeah, one of the ones. Yeah, the, like then the cable's gonna. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do Puck's first. Get the pin away. Spin, spin cycle. Yeah, tumble dry. AJ, do you think I left enough space here to get this plate in? We'll find out. Okay. On counts as in, right? I mean, we cut those chamfers for you special. Thanks. I appreciate you and the things that you do. On does not count as in, for the record. Yeah, okay, what are we doing here? <laughs> Oop, that's not how you grip lock. That's better. Okay, button. Maybe work. There we go. Who parked this thing? <laughs> Pro move. Oh, my jaw's too deep. Mm -hmm. Pro move followed by rookie mistake. Having the Nautilus logo right on the clock kind of kind of helps you with your depth perception, eh? It's a calibrated sticker size. That's right. Oop, hello. Ding. All, right, All right, am I clear to unplug this? You are clear to unplug it. Yeah, there's no... Uh, no switching. There's no switching. It's autonomous. Nice. I know they got some of those things where you flip the little handle on the Mercury switch. Goes on and off. This is not one of those things. This is not one of those things. We'll get to do that at the uh, west flank site. Yeah. Okay. Let me just do this first. It's good thing you guys are so light. Oh, buddy. I should probably grip lock, shouldn't I? Grip lock, grip lock. Hey, uh, Dave, in case you're running into this, the grip lock button will engage and disengage with one press. So you gotta press it right. I don't know what right means. I haven't figured that out yet. But uh, you press the button and confirm before trusting it. Just so you know. Look at that slinky load in that cable, eh? Mm-hmm. Oh man, Trevor, you make this look so easy. You set me up for success, AJ. Is that mated? Sure. Nope.
Uh, before I use excessive force for no reason, give me a sec here. Video, please zoom in. Roger that, going in. Just tell me when. Give her the bees. That is mated. Okay, yeah. come wide, please. Roger that. Didn't even need the press. Just for flare. Okay, uh, I guess we'll keep this in. Yeah, I think we fly. should keep this in. I think you should yaw. What is that? Counterclockwise? Just to free, just to put some slack in that cable. Yeah, totally. And then we can strafe to the east. Okay, you're done your uh, yep. gauges now. I'll give you this. Um, arm is live. Yep. Get that out of the way. Just holding it in the spot. And uh, start the move. Okay, what has happened here? This I need this to not auto turn off my high voltage. That would be a bad thing. Okay, there we go. Okay, one more time, AJ. We're going to turn to the left and head that way. We're going to turn to the left, and then, yeah, then when we're looking at the cable, which we'll be looking pretty much straight north, then we can transit to the east to try to clear this away from our landing zone. Once we're so, facing north, we'll transit east. Yeah, strafe right. Uh, roger. Very turn, cable. turn left, strafe right. Yeah, okay, cool. Because we're going to put... Yeah, I understand. I'm going to also head a little north I with that east move. Yep, I think that's wise. Okay, here we go. Uh, actually, maybe? Yeah, actually, maybe. You could actually, yeah, you could go kind of up and forward and, and just go northeast. Northeast, like, 045. 45. Roger. What's that strain relief doing? Anything? I don't think so, no. Okay, easy. That's a, we call that a fashion grip. Yeah, roger. <laughs> Say when there, AJ. I'm just gonna keep. Yeah, I think clearing it away is wise. Do we want to maybe turn around and, and in back into it? Uh, if you want me to. I don't know. Are we worried about the cable like this coming off and under the sub? No, I don't think so. I'll turn. I'll turn around before letting I mean, it go. It is under slack. It just looks so bendy. So buoyant. Yeah, this is not right. Pink hook's 50 pounds, it's nothing. Ugh. I'm gonna need a ship move to get over there. Can you send me, send me away, please? Yeah, you want east? Yeah, east is fine like, for now, yeah. Uh, 20 meters. Great, please. <laughs> Bridge nav. Good morning. Can we have two zero meters east, please? Thank you. Hey, Josh, you're wondering why it's bouncy? Oh, that's hot, by the way. Uh, you're wondering why it's bouncy? It's because it's light. Is it light? Nothing. I don't know if you were making a joke. I was trying to make a joke. No, uh, nothing landed. No, I wasn't making a joke. You're wondering why auto alt was bouncy. Oh, because it's light. Because it's light. Oh, yeah, I figured that out. Okay. Actually, I didn't. Okay. <laughs> uh, Good one. Good one. <laughs> oh, uh, no. Here, here we go. All right. Mm-hmm.
Yeah, I want to say we're like 110 pounds light right now. Our usual goal is 50, 50 light. This thing can take up and down that much? This thing can take about 120. Wow. That's exciting. Maybe 150 if you're willing to be negative. If you're willing. How are they doing with their moves? Are they hanging in there? Uh, this is our first move on my watch. <laughs> um, first move on our watch. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it's doing okay. Okay. Good. I kind of want to ditch this cable for a minute just because it's heaving. Do you want to throw it out? Yep. If that's what you'd like. Yeah, I think so. We'll re-pick it up. It's just uh, Well, can I just grab it by the handle and not let it go, but p take it out of there? No, it's uh, when I'm heaving up and down, I'm raising a big dust storm, is what I'm thinking. Uh, but don't... the cable's on the ground, you know oh, what I mean? Oh, and you're waiting for the... I see. You don't want to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stand by. No matter where I am, it's going to be heaving up and down, so... Yeah, I'm I see what you're saying. Kind of come up five meters. I don't know if you copied that, AJ. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good to me. Okay. Just making this mess. It's not, not worth it. Freedom! Alright, I'm coming up. Okay, can we mark that spot, please? Sure Just can. in case. Yeah, yeah. Just. Great call. You want me to turn these hydraulics off or not? Yeah, please. Off. Uh, yeah, they're fine. Okay. Give us some time for this dust to clear. Is it dust if it's in water? I think you'd have to ask the dust. <laughs> you mean ask the dust? Yeah. I think I'd have to ask a dust expert. Yeah, I could do that too. It's harder to find dust experts than it is to find dust. It's harder to communicate with dust than it is dust experts. Yeah, but not much. Too. Not much, yeah. <laughs> have you met a dust <laughs> expert? <laughs> Pretty hard to talk to. <laughs> Terrible. So you got any hobbies? Yeah, dust. <laughs> Yeah, dust. <laughs> okay. Move, little guy. <laughs> Come on. It's trying, it's trying. Maybe I'll just pull you. Patient and bored, just pull you over. Are you impatient or are you bored? And. Can't be both. Okay. <laughs> For it's no reason at all. Yeah, sorry. You disappoint. Can my heading around, should I turn auto head off or leave it on? Doesn't matter. I don't care what you do. You have all the power, it's no fair. Oh, that's the end. Hard stop. Did I pull you 360 somehow? That doesn't make any sense. No? What? No. Whoa, whoa, what's going on? Yeah, I pulled you I pulled you 270. You did? Ah, neat. Explain that science. So wait, is that gonna put a turn in there? Yeah. Because so your auto heading will take path of least resistance. Right. So I gotta just come around. Come around. Who's got all the power now? <sighs> is it time to go grab that cable? Yeah, I'm backing up right now. Okay.
to your right a little bit. Yeah, Roger. There it is. Roger. Me to land for this crab, Josh? Whatever you like. What do you want me to do? What, what, what do you want to do? I'll go for it. Coming on. When you're ready, yeah. Should be able to reach it there. Roger. Oh, I am. I'm landed. Okay. All right, let's continue our move to the northeast. Roger. Halted. Thank you. How much are we moving northeast, and do we want to ship move that direction? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I think, I think we'll just go another, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know, 10 meters maybe. Okay. Hey Josh, can you rotate that wrist just to get that cable? Come not live bending? for one sec there, Trev. Yeah. Thank you. More better? More better. Frozen, Trev. Okay. Yeah, let me know when you're happy there, AJ. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe another few meters. Sounds good. The further it is away from where we're going to be working, the better. Yeah, Roger. We can survey it after and. Yeah, see we'll if we're just. Happy. We should probably just mark sort of the southernmost point. Yeah, understood. On our way back to the uh, old platform, then we'll set a new LZ, okay. and then we'll get the winch guys all fired up. Okay. That's probably good. Okay. Coming live. Can we mark this position now? Sure can. Uh huh. Just drop it, Josh. Uh huh. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so long. So we'll just follow that cable back and we'll just mark the southernmost position of that cable curve. Roger. Hydraulics are off. Roger. Trevor, if you're spinning around, does that mean I gotta spin Atlanta around? No, we're zeros right now. Roger. Okay, connector's right underneath me right now, right underneath my front. And we'll head this way. It's called the bow. I was wondering that as I was saying that. Yeah, I know, like, I, could, oh. I could hear you. <laughs> it's just off the... <laughs> the little pause, front. I was like, oh, oh, he thought about saying bow. <laughs> yeah, it's not It's not the bow, though, is it? Nope. It'd be the bow of a submarine, though? 
I don't think submarines have bows. I don't know. Nav, can you give me a bearing and distance from the platform to that cable drop mark? Yeah. Also, this track line will tell you where we're, uh, where the cable's actually laid. Mm -hmm. Heading west now, so this might be the southernmost point. Okay, it's about two eight meters. Yep. And from where we dropped the cable to the platform, bearing two two two. Okay. So I think we want. Tell me, I'm crazy, AJ. I think we want to mark the lowest. Yeah. Sorry, the most southerly position on my track line there. Yep. He already said that. That's exactly yeah. right. So that's good there. Trevor, we can just uh, turn around and head back to the platform. Turn around. Roger. What do you want to mark here, Trevor? What does AJ want to mark? He wants to mark right there. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay, and what are we calling this? We can just call that like Southern Cable Point. Okay. All these marks are just kind of operational. They're not ones that we're going to need to save. Roger. Looks like we cleared a uh, quite a quite a distance there for us. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's nice. Um, I think you're quite high. Pardon me. I think you're quite high. Yeah, I'm four meters off. Hundred percent down. What are you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you gonna do? Do we want to let the deck know that we're That's pretty funny. a few minutes away from wanting uh, their involvement here? You want us to do that or you to yeah. do that? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't have a radio. Okay. But uh, I guess we'll need a ship move for them, won't we? Yeah, we're not ready to lay the wire in yet. We gotta, uh, so we're going to mark a spot yep. and then we're going to get the heck out of Dodge. And then yep. we're going to move the ship and then we're going to get the heck out of Dodge some more. Okay. I think that makes sense, right? Yeah, so I don't know if from this orientation we can just pick a spot that's, what are we thinking, five meters to the northwest? Yeah. Uh, so so northwest, whatever that so is. Like where three, I am right now, ish. Three, what is northwest? 315? 315, yeah. So I'm looking reciprocal heading right now, 135 ish. Uh, so I'm slightly more north than west, but I'm probably about five meters away. I don't know. How far am I? Three yeah, meters? Do we hit, can we see it on sonar? I feel like we're not getting hits. I'm not low enough. Yeah. This is also on like... Super far. How many get that? Yeah, <laughs> silly, silly mode. There you go. Two and a half meters away right now. I'm okay. not good at us. Or wait. That's seven, two. Seven and a half meters away. <laughs> seven and a half. Thank you. Trick me. Gotcha. Fooled me. Well, is it easier to just mark this on nav? Yeah. Go okay. for it. So Nav, can you mark a landing zone that's going to be five meters northwest of the platform? Yes. That's, yeah, that's great. Yeah. And then the uh, next piece of info AJ, is mm -hmm. we can uh, kind of extrapolate that. So Atalanta's hanging straight off the transom, but it's displaced because of some.